Hi, everyone. Um, Zohei from Flash Trade, here to talk about problems with DeFi and the solutions that we have been working on at Flash Trade. Um, right now, um, as much as we love to talk about technicals, we are today going to talk about our journey as developers in the Solana ecosystem. And uh, we've been a team that's pioneered composability with uh, Investin Pro, uh, decentralized hedge fund management, composing over all the protocols that you saw of. And today we are going to go through the whole journey together um, and understand how composability has shaped Solana as we see it today. Um, so I'm going to keep it interactive um, and uh, expecting answers from all of you guys on stuff that's going to come up. So let's start. Composability. Um, who here understands composability? Show of hands? Few people, but everyone uses it and will come to it. Composability is easy. Do we agree? Very few people agree. So, which means composability is tough. Any disagreements? <laughs> All right. So composability is possible um, and necessary, too. So it's possible, but it's complicated at the end, because um, as we see, composability is not easily understandable. Even though you use it all day, every time that you're transferring a token, you're composing over a program that's already there, and you're interacting with it. So it's possible on Solana, because Solana is monolithic, which allows us to compose. Right? Uh, we have a competing ecosystem, uh, which goes by Cosmos. And the biggest trouble that we have had people building app chains there is the lack of composability. Right? Uh, Solana being monolithic supports composability. And composability is necessary because programs and state are modular. So we have this, this complex combination of Solana being monolithic, but programs and state being, being modular. And that's the reason you need composability for all of those things to, be, to, to connect together. There's a process by which we do composability on Solana. And uh, it's actually a complicated process of integrations, which is what we call CPI in short. So CPI actually stands for cross-program invocation, if someone's wondering. And that's the thing. <laughs> it's complicated. And we know that because we worked on it. And uh, we've been there, and we've done that all along, starting from early 2021, uh, composing over Radium and Orca as Texas had invested in, uh, building the fund management protocol that we spoke about. And one of our best products was market making funds for Mango, where market makers could pool funds together um, and market make on Mango as if they were using their own wallets or their own funds. And yeah, all, all of that was live for, for people to check out. And yeah, we've had great traction. We have said more than $100 million worth of volume on Mango through our funds. And then all of the other protocols, amazing protocols. We had uh, uh, DOVs on friction. Uh, we, we had the you know, swap engine through, routing through Jupyter. And Jupyter is an epitome of compos composability. They compose over all the DEXs. And we composed over them as a swap engine. So yeah, we know composability to the core. And, but then, all of, all, all of that was cool in you know, early 2022. Everything was, was great. But then. We all know something happened. And I assume by color of that, you know what we are talking about. Uh, not going to mention it. What? <laughs> and we've seen this. We've, we know what we're referring to. And then we decided, having been in the trenches with, with all of our brothers and devs on Solana, figuring out what to do next, uh, having liquidity issues, you know, assets being not backed, Withdrawals not being honored by an exchange, uh, it affected our lives. How much ever we want to kind of be decentralized, be very affected. Every protocol suffered its fate. Um, they decided to build back stronger and better with Flash Trade. 
And that's what uh, our journey concludes with. We decided to build back uh, with, with a vision that, that far exceeds anything that we have seen uh, on Solana uh, as part of the DeFi ecosystem. Uh, because we've been seeing all of these things you know, go wrong, and we decided to do the right thing ourselves instead of waiting for someone else to come up with a solution. So it was our take at take, taking matters in our own hands. And that's where the idea of Flash Trade was born. Um, and a bit of a background on us coming to Solana. We have been builders of composability on EVMs in the past. So we have had protocols deployed in production uh, on mainnet, on Arbitrum as an L2, on, on solutions like Binance, Smart Chain, and Polygon. And we've been there. We've seen all of that stuff. And it was time to bring in the best from all across DeFi, all together on Solana, and time to declare war against centralized exchanges. And that's what Flash Trade stands for. Um, it's, 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 it's a UX-focused protocol which aims to compete against centralized exchanges together with all DeFi protocols um, on Solana. And we do that by offering asset-backed derivatives. Now, why is this important? And what is asset-backed derivatives? One of the biggest trouble we have had as an ecosystem is much of our protocols, our products, depended on bridged assets, um, which were represented by, by someone we should not have trusted. Uh, and, and then at the end, as a decentralized system, the biggest points of failure is the assets themselves. And once you're able to establish trust in the assets that you have, you know, if, if, you, if all of us are in crypto, all of us have traded Bitcoin once in our lifetime, and if we had a way to represent Bitcoin on chain, that would solve a great amount of problems, right? This is fairly trivial, but it, it, it was a question back then that you know, all the wrapped assets that you have on chain, how, how easy is it to trust them and how difficult it is to actually establish transparency and trust? And for that reason, like once you are able to establish 100% uh, trust on one particular asset, we can use that for all of our trades. And from that idea is where we come to asset-backed derivatives, and which we were all excited for, and we were all scared back then, because liquidity was scarce. And Liquid, if we know we are screwed if liquidity remains scarce. Liquidity is, is important for protocols to operate. And we have seen what happens when there is a liquidity crunch on, on chain. Liquidations go wrong, and that could be a cascade of catastrophes happening. So you want liquidity. You want liquidity as, as a DEX. You would want that as a bottle and protocol. Uh, you would want that as any any primitive in operating in DeFi. So this is a chart right here uh, from a week back representing the, the TVL on, on Solana. And you see that, that mountain up there, right? And we've seen that liquidity deteriorate over time. And it's our job to bring it back up. It, it's in our hands to get back to right at the top where you know, we were at, at, at once. So it wasn't because of others. It wasn't because of one particular entity operating. It was us offering our best. And we need to get back at it. Now, we've, we've spent so much time in the trenches. Why can't we reclaim back the glory which we once had? And that could be done. But we haven't seen that. And that could change if we offered pull-to-peer, Oracle-based, asset-backed coin margin perpetuals. Now, what is a pull-to-peer Oracle-based asset-backed coin margin perpetual? I'll answer, answer that um, in a short while. The idea is to have an ecosystem or a protocol where schematic borrow lend is complemented by asset exposure lending. Now, schematic borrow lend is offered by a lot of protocols um, on Solana, and you, you know of those. So that's, that's the normal borrow lend protocols that you have, where you go and lend into a pool, and, people, um, and, and then people come and borrow against it. 
and it's an over collateralized lending platform. Um, it, it started off back in the day uh, with Aave and Compound leading the charge, and then we have protocols on Solana, uh, including Solin and MarginFi, leading the charge today. So it's, it's schematic borrowland where borrowers get an APY and uh, borrowers pay a fee, which is converted to an APR for lenders. What if we complement that by asset exposure lending? And what is asset exposure lending? Uh, it's different from schematic borrow lend in a way where you borrow, um, borrow an asset, but you owe back just the nominal USD value of the asset that you just borrowed. Counterparty settlement is replaced by guaranteed PL payoff. What this means is when you settle on an order book, you always have to find a counterparty. And that has been a trouble. All of us have used solutions including Mango Markets and, and Drift as, uh, and Zeta as order book protocols. And one of the issues that we see protocols struggling with is, is counterparty settlement. Where you need to find an account which is, uh, if you've made a profit and if you want to settle a profit, you need to find an account that has made a loss. And then that's the only way you can settle profits or losses against each other. This is what could be replaced by guaranteed PL payoff. How can we guarantee a PL payoff? That is through using asset backed, asset backed pool, which kind of locks up funds and does asset exposure lending to you to guarantee a PL payoff. And then, could we replace or substitute impermanent loss uh, with diversified exposure and real yield? How could this be done? Is by using a multi asset pool which diversified your exposure and earns you real yield by, again, by, by lending exposure to assets and earning a fee. So you know, what if we had schematic borrow lend complemented by asset exposure lending, counterparty settlement replaced by guaranteed PL payoff, and impermanent loss substituted by diversified exposure and real yield, just like GMX. And GMX was live on Arbitrum from day zero, and we've seen them grow uh, together all along. And this is the TVL that you see on GMX, and it's, it's kind of representative of how the DeFi ecosystem on, on Arbitrum grew. But what if we can further complement it with things that are only possible on Solana? That is low latency, lower fees, transparent pricing, and risk management. Now, one of the troubles that we've seen on EVMs is the high latency. You have the mempool, you can't cover it up, and it's always going to end up delaying your transactions. Solana has got lowest latency possible on the production blockchain, and, uh, which, which, is, which has seen public traction. Uh, it's just got 400 millisecond slot times, and that's, that's quite low of a latency for an observable trader. Uh, and yeah, HFTs can kind of complain about that. But lower fees, as we all know, uh, we have the lowest possible fee for a blockchain with such a TVL in production. And then transparent pricing and risk management, because so, uh, the, the low latency allows us to kind of build a transparent pricing system and a transparent risk management system, which is completely permissionless. And it can be coupled with uh, synthetic perps, uh, which is possible because we have lower lower latency and a lot more infra than the EVMs to support both asset-backed perpetuals and synthetic perpetuals on the same pool. And then we can extend this with account abstraction and gamification with evolutionary NFTs and NOTAS, which we should be focusing on as we talk. So account abstraction has been the talk of the town, and gamification is what we are going to come up with NFTs, So, which is an ecosystem on Solana, which DeFi has neglected for a long time. So they, they worked in two silos. So we have a DeFi silo and an NFT silo, and they've never interacted with each other. And this, which is what we're going to bring together with DeFi X NFTs at Flash Trade. And why do we need that as, as a DeFi ecosystem? We're just talking of value, which is where we separate assets and value from identity and data. The biggest trouble that, that DeFi has trouble with is user experience. We make it so complicated for people to come and trade on chain, uh, come create an account and deposit money into that account, and then you're going to come and trade. Um, it, it just adds so many steps. Like, what if you wanted, what if a, a DGEN trader uh, who's interacting with, with protocols on the EVM just wants to come in and try out 
like a single click trade. That could be made possible, but how do you track his identity or his, you know, for, for different stuff, including loyalty points and rewards? We can do that using the very tool that could help us bootstrap community, that's NFTs. Right? And we have had both ecosystems running in parallel, and it's merging those two together to separate assets and value in, in, as part of DeFi in your wallet, and then isolating data uh, and identity as an ownership of your NFT. So your data would now be transferable. You now you use your wallet once to trade uh, on a protocol. You can skip wallets and transfer the NFT and come back with the exact same benefits. So your identity now becomes transferable, which is what the whole idea of a flash trade has been. And with all of these bringing together, we're going to make Perpetuals great again with flash trade. So let's go. <laughs> I, I appreciate the, the, the applause. We're not done yet. We've got quite a bit of time left. Uh, just a couple minutes left for me to wrap up. This is a QR code for all of you to try out flash trade on DevNet right now. And the biggest benefit that you have is you don't need a wallet to try it out. Just scan the QR code, and you can get started. But I, I have a word of caution for you. The network here isn't great. So uh, you guys, if you, if you have your own personal um, networks connected with a good internet, you should try it out for the best uh, UX possible on, on a DEX. I'm going to walk you through uh, the same experience uh, on my machine. So let's get started. All right, that's there for you. That's Flash Trade. As you see, uh, we talked about asset backed perpetuals, and that's what we have uh, with Soul, BDC, and ETH um, being on the pool. And then you have commodities, equities, and Forex. And this is a demonstration of what's possible with the whole stack with synthetic perpetuals and asset backed perps on the same pool. So we're going to have a look. At the end page. So this is, this is where you see all the assets on the pool. So this is a multi-asset pool where you can deposit multiple assets so LPs get diversified exposure right off the bat. And they also earn real yield. And let's get back to the trading terminal. Uh, you see I have a position open, uh, longing euro, or pseudo-longing euro. And let's, let's go and long some soul. Uh, yeah prefer round numbers. And we at Flash Trade offer up to 100x leverage. So it's, let's, let's fucking go with 100x leverage long on Seoul. And it's all backed by real assets. So you don't have to find a counterparty. The pool is taking uh, the risk as a counterparty for you. And yeah, let's, let's fucking go. Let's, let's see how quick it, it is. And you see the position. It's all live on, on DevNet. So I'm not, not just making things up. It's, it's a transaction. Uh, that, that happens on DevNet. So you can, you can actually see the transaction going through. Uh, and that, that was the UX we all worked really hard for. Um, and I would love to have a round of applause for my team for making this happen. And this is, this is where all, all the hard work pays off. Uh, you know, and remember uh, showing this to Tolly as well backstage. Uh, and, you know, that, that, that experience of you know, even thinking twice whether, whether a transaction actually went through, this makes it all worth. And this is where uh, focusing on UX is important, for, for, especially for a DEX. And offering up to 100x leverage, you, know, you don't want to miss, uh, miss an eyelid, right? And that's, that's what we're all here for. And I hope I don't get wrecked and I don't get liquidated on, 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 on screen. But, but yeah, that, that's Flash Trade for you. And guy, go and check us out and hammer us with all you got. And that's what we end with. Thank you.